Well, welcome. In this video, we're going to be looking at exponential functions. Let's start out by reviewing what an exponential function is. Remember, an exponential is going to be in this an exponential function is going to be in this form. y or f of x equals a times b to the x power. That a, what that represents is what we call the initial amount, what we start out with. And we'll be looking at some examples here in a minute, and you'll see how we use that. But a represents your initial amount. b is what we call the growth factor, and that tells us a couple of different things, which we'll get to. But that b value, that growth factor, is also sometimes called the percent of change. Because there's going to be times where they talk about a situation or a story problem dealing with percent increase or a percent decrease. Now in those situations, it's important that we know what to do with the percents because we never leave the percents as they are. So if we're dealing with a percent increase, well that means that we had originally 100% of whatever the value was and now it's increased by another, let's say, 2%. So then what we would do is we would take, well, we had 100% originally plus another 2%. So now we're working with 102% of the original value. And then we change that percent to a decimal. So we'd be looking at 1.02. Now there's going to be other times where we're dealing with X, uh, percent decrease. And in situations where our value is decreasing by a certain percentage, we take 100% of whatever the value was originally and subtract from that the percent that we're losing. So if we had a situation that we had a population or a situation that was decreasing by 4%, we take 100% of the original value, subtract the 4%, giving us 96% and then change that 90%, 96% to a decimal of 0.96. So it's important that you understand how to work with percents before we look at some of these story problems. So speaking of story problems, let's go there next. So in this story problem, it says the town of Centerburg is suffering from a decline in population. A demographer has predicted that under current conditions, the current population will decrease by 2% each year over the next decade. However, a manufacturer claims that a new factory will reverse the trend and cause the population to actually grow by 4% annually instead. So we're going to create equations to describe the population of Centerburg as a function of time under these two conditions. So we're going to have function f and function g. So function f is dealing with what the manufacturer is saying, that the, saying that the population is currently 28,500 people, but it's going to increase by 4% each year. So we're going to create a function f to represent the population increasing by 4%. And function g is going to be based on the demographer that's saying, well, it's declining by 2% each year, so it's going to continue to do that. And so we'd start out with your initial amount of 28,500, and it's going to decrease by 2% each year. So we're going to create two separate functions. So again, recall that our functions are going to be in this form, f of x equals a times b to the x power. So for f of x, our first function here, our initial amount is a 28,500. Now your growth factor is looking at this percent. So here your percent, your 4%, it's increasing. So we're going to take that 100% that we would have had originally plus another 4% which is 104%, and as a decimal, that's going to be 1.04. So that's our growth factor. Then our exponent's going to be x. Now we're going to do one for function g. This is based on the demographer that's saying that it's going to decrease by 2% each year. So your initial amount is still the 28,500. But this time, it's decreasing by 2%. So again, what that means is you take 100% minus 2%, which gives us 98%, which as a decimal is 0.98. So we'd have 0.98 here for our growth factor. And now we're going to, uh, oops, can't forget my exponent. Now we're going to answer part B. It says compare the projected population after 10 years. So we're going to figure out how these two answers would differ. So for f of x, we're going to put 10 in there. And if you type that in on your calculator, we get 42,190. Where if I put d, uh, 10 into function g, I 
I end up, when I put that in my calculator, we end up getting 23,290. So you can see that there's a big difference there between these two predictions. Now, I want you guys to try this next one on your own. So I want you to create, read the story problem where presently the towns of Scarsdale and Ampleton both have approximately 8,500 residents. Over the next five years, the population of Ampleton is expected to increase by approximately 2.3% per year, while the population of Scarsdale is expected to decrease by about 0.9% each year. So what I want you to do is I want you to create uh, two separate equations, uh, calling them function S and function A. And so I'll do that for part A here. And then figure out um, what their populations would be after five years. So why don't you pause the video and hit play when you're ready to check your answer. Okay, so you should have gotten 8,124 as your population in um, Scarceville. And you should have gotten 9,524 as your for your population in Ampleton. Now, if you didn't get that, let's see what you should have done. Now, what you should have done is your function here for function S, the initial amount is 8,500. But remember, for um, Scarceville, they're decreasing their population by 0.9% each year. So you take 100% of what they would have had before, minus 0.9 would give you 99.1%. Change it to a decimal and you get 0.991. That's your value for B in this case. And for Ampleton, they're increasing by 2.3%. So add that to 100 and you get 102.3%, which has a decimal is 1.023. So we, that's where we get that growth factor from. And then when we plug those numbers into our equations, we would put... Uh, 5 in for x in both of those equations, and that's how we get our two answers. So these two examples bring us to another concept, and that is this idea of exponential growth and exponential decay. Anytime we have a growth factor that's greater than 1, so in the examples that we had uh, percent increases, and we had growth factors that were greater than 1, those are examples of exponential growth. And anytime we have a function whose growth factor is between 0 and 1, we call that an example of exponential decay. So let's look at some other situations here. Let's look at this example. The equation A equals P times 1 plus R to the T power represents your balance A after T years when P dollars is, de is deposited into an account which pays an annual percentage yield of R. Suppose $2,500 is invested in an account with a 5.3% annual year annual yield. What is the yearly growth factor? So we're trying to figure out what is the growth factor here. Well, if you look at this original equation, it's in the form a times b to the x power, with a being your principal dollar amount, the dollar amount that we're investing. b is 1 plus your uh, rate, which is exactly what we're doing if it was an increased percentage in the previous examples. And t, your time, is the same as your exponent x. So when it says, what is the yearly growth factor? Well, we're going to take the 5.3%. If I change, in this case here, I would change it to a decimal first, which would be 0 0.053. So that's your rate. Add that to 1. And we get 1.053. So my growth factor would be 1.053. What is the equation for the balance after seven years? So then, or after t years? For that, I would replace my p with my principal amount. So it's going to be a equals your principal amount, which is 2,500, times the 1.053 that we just got. And then your exponent would be t. So then it says, what is the balance after seven years? We just put seven in for t. And when you do that, we get $3,588.71. I always make sure your answers make sense, too. If I got an answer that were in the millions of dollars, chances are that meant that I messed up somewhere with my percentage rate. Because uh, if I'm only earning 5.3% annually over the course of seven years, I'm not going to have an astronomical amount of money. So if you ended up with something like... Um, 
$3,588,710 um, means you did something wrong with your percent. When it says what value is associated with t of negative 2, that just means that we put negative 2 in our function. So here we would have 2,500 times 1.053 the negative second power, when we do that, we get $2,254.67. And then it says, what does t equal negative 2 mean? Now, what they're asking for is, in the context of the problem, what does this represent? So this would represent, if our t is a negative number, that means we're going back in time. So you could say that this represents how much money they had two years ago, or an investment made two years ago. So why don't you guys try this next one on your own. So why don't you go ahead and um, pause the video and hit play like you did before when you're ready to check your answer. Well, let's see how you did here. You might not have had any problems with part A. You should have gotten the equation 2000 times 1.08 to the t power. But you might have, have, might have a different answer here for part B. You have to be careful. Because remember, we're starting on the age of 21. So we're not looking at how much you'd have at 65 years later. We're trying to figure out how much would you have at the age of 65. Well, now to figure that out, so let's see how you did here. You shouldn't have had any problems with part A. You should have got the equation A equals 2,000 times 1.08 to the t power. Now you might have a different answer here for B. The reason why is because you probably use 65 as your exponent, but you've got to read the problem carefully. It's not asking how much you'd have 65 years later. It's how much would you have when you are 65 years old, and you're currently in this story problem, you're 21. You're, you're on your 21st birthday is when you first invested the $2,000. Now, you might also say, well, wait a minute, 65 minus 21 is 44. It's not 45. Well, you've got to remember when you subtract those values, that means you're not including the starting point. You wouldn't be including that 21st year. So uh, we'd have to include that 21st year by adding another year to that. So, yes, 65 minus 21 is 44, but then we have to include that 21st year because we're getting it on that 21st birthday. So we have that year to include. So it'd be 45 is your exponent. So when you do that, that's when you get your dollar amount. Now, part C was also tricky. How much money would you have to invest when you were 17 at the same yield to get the same result in part B? So again, we're trying to figure out um, what we'd have to invest originally, so what your initial amount would be to get $63,840.90. If instead of starting out at 21, we started out at 17. So we still have to figure out what our principal amount would be. The 1.08 stays the same. But this time our exponent's going to be 49, because this is four extra years. And so when you go to simplify this, what we're going to have to do is we're going to take the 1.08 to the 49 power. We have to take care of that first. If you remember order of operations, we have to take care of exponents uh, first. So when we go to simplify that, what you're going to get as your answer is you're going to get 43.43. So I would have 63,840.43. Nine equals p times the forty-three point four three. Oops. And when you divide that out, and we take sixty-three thousand eight hundred forty point nine divided by forty-three point four three, we get your dollar amount, which is about one thousand four hundred seventy dollars and six cents. So if you would instead have vested $1,470.06 when you were 17, you ended up with you would end up with the same amount after 49 years. It would take you 49 years to get there. Okay. So the examples that we did in part 1A and 2A illustrate that the value of a in f of x represents what we call the initial value. We talked about that at the beginning. This is just reviewing what we talked about. And the value b determines whether f models exponential growth or exponential decay. But how do you know, but, or but how do the values of a and b affect the overall graph of the function? Well, in a minute, we're going to be looking at, um, or I should say in the next video, we're going to be looking at how to 
come up with an equation if we're just given two points. And we're actually not going to be using a graphing calculator like it says here in the activity, but we're going to learn how to do this by hand. So we're going to end this video at this point, but in the next video you're going to see how to um, come up with an equation um, as opposed to being given the equation like we have been in the previous problems. So watch that, exam or watch that next video so then that way you can be able to complete your assignment.